Now that we've learned the basics, it's time to lay out a prototype home page in code. So what I'm going to do is clear out some of the things that I've got in here to make it fresh. Clear back to the body section, and I'm going to rename this to uh, Music Festival Homepage. Throughout the course of this class, you're going to be building, or at least using the metaphor of a music festival website to build this home page. So for this part of the assignment, you're going to be building your first home page, and I find it most instructive to rough this out from the top down. So what we're going to do is we're going to carve out some different sections for this website and add some pieces in here. Um, in the body section is where we start. Remember, this is where all the content for your page goes here. So I'm going to make a link. So links are the basis of any good navigation bar. And you have to know how to write links in HTML. And this is how it works. A tag. It's, it's pretty simple. It's actually a tag that just starts off with A, H-R-E-F. H-ref equals quotation marks. That same convention that I showed you earlier. This is how you write a link. Now, there are several ways you can do links in HTML. I'm going to show you uh, both ways right out of the gate. The internal way, let me go ahead and copy this and paste this so we have two links. I have two links at the top of my page. The first is going to be an internal link, and the second will be an external link. This is an internal link. What I've done here is I have gone through and put in the file name of what I want this to link to. This href, this hyperlink reference, will link to my index.html file. That file is in my website week one folder, index.html. This is going to be the home link. This is how we create a link. You put in the href, you put the location of the href inside the quotation marks, then outside of the tag, sandwiched between the close a tag. Remember, we, we, we sandwich these things between each other to, to invoke a property. You write the name, the text of the link, right? I'm going to save this, refresh. Up top, we've got a home link. Now, when I click this, notice something happens. We get a, a brief blip on the page up top here and here. I'm refreshing the page. By hitting home, it is calling up my page, my index.html, and loading it into my browser. This is how you make a nav bar. Now, this is kind of a quick way of producing. I'm actually going to, to do the external link first, then I'll show you how to finish this nav bar. External links work basically the same way. You have an href. You've got where you want this to go. Maybe I want this to go to w3schools.com. An external link. What you then do is you go to your browser, you copy a URL out of your browser, go back to your code, paste that URL inside, let me stretch this out a little bit, paste that URL inside the quotation marks, and it will take you as a live link to that home page. Let's refresh our page and check. Ah, there we go. Now, notice there's no, there's no break between these two. A lot of times you'll see people put a dash. This is why many times you'll see vertical spaces. Maybe I'll put a vertical slash between these lines here. There you go. See how that breaks those up a little bit? This is an old, old way of doing a navigation bar. Now, when I click on this, look at that. It jumps out to the W3Schools website. If I hit back, it goes back to my home page, loads up my home page. So that's an external link, internal links versus external links. This is how you do it. Anytime you want to provide, when I was saying in the assignment, your assignment for this week says to link back to any original content that you got, this is how you do it. This is how you make a link. All right, so. Let me remove this link, and I'm going to leave this uh, dash separator in there, and I'm going to copy this link and paste it below. I'm going to do five of them. I would recommend right out of the gate, you think about the structure of your website and what your pages are going to be titled. So say, for instance, for your music festival website, you've got a home page, you've got a page that's called Maybe you've got tickets. Maybe you've got lineup. Maybe uh, merchandise and contact. 
you can go ahead and change the names of the buttons right now. They all link back to my homepage. There are no other pages created yet in my website. So you can leave these all as index.html for now or completely take out the wiring or you could even put in what you think these pages are going to be titled. It would be smart in the f now in the future we're going to make these pages. We haven't made these pages yet. But when we do name these pages, if I name them something simple like what's on the buttons, I will have a pre-wired, pre-rigged navigation bar up top. Check this out. Now, obviously, this doesn't go anywhere because these these pages haven't been created yet. But if I create it this way and I, I create the spots for my buttons inside my code already, A, that gives you practice making a navigation bar. But B, this is already pre-rigged because then we'll save this page out as a template for our future pages in which case we'll have the navigation bar already rigged up. So that's how you make a simple navigation bar. I, like I said, start from top down. So now that I've got a navigation bar lined up in my page, I'm going to go down a couple lines here and I'm going to add a banner image. So hopefully you've done a little bit of Googling to see what, uh, what music festival websites look like. Usually you'll have a call to action banner. Um, you'll have your navigation bar up top, some sort of larger banner next, um, information below that. So let's start roughing out this layout. I have made a couple of placeholder images. I've got two of them. I've got a web banner placeholder and I've got a picture placeholder that I can put inside my website just for filler content for now. You can do the same when you build yours. So to add our placeholder image, our banner, it starts the same way as adding a regular image. We've got IMG SRC equals quotation marks. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to my images, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different in the folder structure. This is not the best way to keep images in your website. I've added these locally now just for ease of use, but what you really want to do, you're going to start to get some complicated stuff in this folder. You'd like to make subfolders. One of the most common subfolders is an IMG subfolder. I would recommend you take all of your images, move those into an IMG subfolder so that you keep your folder structure clean and clear. Pretty much every website build does this. Now, that creates some problems whenever we're wiring up our images. If I just choose the name of the image right now, like say for instance, I'm going to add in this web banner.jpg here, I'm gonna copy the name of this off of the file and paste it in here. Now, I'm gonna save it. My image isn't gonna load properly, but I wanted to show you why. Refresh, check it out. You get a broken image, okay? This is because the image has been moved to a subfolder, an IMG subfolder. I've got the index file here, and it's looking for that code for web banner one, and it can't find it. What I've got to do is tell it that it went into the image subfolder, and we do that by looking at what the name of the subfolder is. We go back to our code, and we do the name of the subfolder forward slash. Forward slash means go down a web folder. It's looking for, or go down a folder in a directory, sorry. So anytime you see a forward slash in, in web coding, it's saying look for a folder and go inside that folder. So it's pushing inside the folder, then looking for the name of the file. So now if we save this, don't want to purchase it, then we save this and refresh. Now the image loads, see? Now the, the image is way too large. This is very common. When you first load the imagery, you've noticed this hopefully from last time, it does not fit to the size of the browser, okay? It just puts it in at the default size of the image. We don't want that. These days, whenever we look up a website, at least half of the time, most people are going to do it on a mobile device, a phone, which is about, if you take your browser and crush your browser, it's about this ratio. It's a thin ratio. You can also t test this ratio by control clicking. Yeah, I'm on Chrome and on Mac. So if I control click, you can right click if you're on PC and do inspect. If you inspect this, you get some options up top here. Look, check it out up top. You've got a little responsive uh, browser window here. You can change this to some common ratios. Say if I do iPhone 12 Pro, I could see what size my web banner is. That's, that's not fitting to my browser size. If I was on phone, it would be pushing off the edge and be scrollable, which is what we don't want. So instead to control that, this is how you make responsive web design, or at least you start it. We are going to add a property inside here. 
we go to our, our IMG SRC, and you may have seen this in your research, how you control the size of images. Width equals quotation marks. You can also add a height property, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. You'll see it online as width and height, but I would recommend in responsive web design, and our little uh, W3Schools tutorial about has a little thing about responsive design I, I recommend you read through that's got some good explanations of this. What we're gonna do is just set a width value in percentages. Okay, if I give it a width of 100%, watch what happens. Refresh. Now my web banner, no matter the size of my browser, will be 100% the size of that browser. Whether I go to phone ratio, whether I'm at tablet ratio, or whether I'm at full desktop ratio. This is a great trick. Anytime you place an image inside your website, you want to place it using percentages is the, is the way to do it. So now that I've got that image in there and controlled with a percentage, I can start to lay out some more things. Now, this is a little sloppy though. I, before I go any further here, I'm going to show you a tag that you want to start to use to pick things apart. I would recommend you put a div tag, open tag, close tag. Now notice where, where I've added this div tag. I have added this div tag. Let me cascade some things here to make this a little cleaner. Tab these out a little bit. I've added a div tag around, check out the open and close here. Let me get this back. Okay, so I've added a div tag, open and close tag around my nav bar. I'm going to do the same thing, add another div tag around this header image. Anytime you do a row, a horizontal row of content, this nav bar is a row. This web banner is a row. Okay. Anytime you create a row of content, you'd like to make another div. A div tag is a divide tag. What that does is, is put a literal divider in your page around each row of content. To do web design properly, that's absolutely what you want to do. Get used to making a new div tag each time you add new content. I'm going to show you how to do some column code here in a second, and I'm going to use a div tag for that column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a div tag in to pick out the next row of content. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw it in there real quick. Open and close. Okay, And I'm going to add two blocks of content beneath this web banner, a double column of content, one picture and one image. So to do two columns of content, you would want two div tags. Okay, each, each column, each piece needs its own separate div tag. So I'm going to do one div tag and paste another div tag below that. Got two open div tags here. Okay, Inside this first div tag, I'm going to put another image. So IMG SRC equals quotation marks, the name and location of the image. Remember, mine is in an images subfolder. So I'm just going to check my images subfolder. This one is called web picture one. I'm going to copy the name of that. Okay. Remember, go back to your code. We need the location of the image, the name of the image, put inside this SRC. So I'm going to do img forward slash web picture one uh, dot jpg. And the width as well. I'm going to leave that at 100%. I want it to take up the whole column, and then I'm going to control that column size. All right, so I'm going to save it and refresh it. There we go. Now check it out. I've got one chunk. I'm gonna, it, isn't, it isn't a column yet, but we're going to work with that in a second. Okay. The second div, I'm just going to put a piece of text inside of. And I can control that with a paragraph tag and some styling here in a minute. But let me go ahead and show you that. Okay, so I've got two different pieces inside here. I've got the picture and I've got this little piece of text and I want them to sit side by side. And the code that I need to add will go into the head of the document. I'm going to add a on-page style sheet to do this. You could very well do this in an external style sheet and it might be better to do that honestly for the, for the full rollout, but we'll just go ahead and do an internal style sheet for now. This style tag what I'm going to do is introduce the concept of classes and IDs on divs. These are things we can use to control divs specifically and to give us flexibility in our coding. What this means 
I'm going to go up at the top into my style tag here, and I'm going to give this div a specific definition. In this case, uh, I'm going I'm to define out the div for my picture and my text. I'm going to define a property for those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, and I'm going to put a class name on this div. We can give divs names. In this case, we're going to put a dot. A dot signifies a class. So what I'm going to do is create a class called column, dot column. Then I'm going to open my curly brackets, as you saw with the CSS earlier. So a dot column, a dot, again, denotes that this is going to be a class. And a class is just a specific name that I can give a div to give it a property. It's like a tag. Float left. The float property. You can get in an experiment with some different things with the float property if you like. But what this default does is this property, this float left property, creates columns. So what I'm going to do, instead of directly applying this float left inside a style tag on my inline style here, I call it as a class dot column. I go to the div tag, the divider that I showed you earlier, that contains my web image, this one. And I'm going to go space class equals quotation marks and then the name of the class. So the class that I just set up was called column. Okay, so now my div has a column class on it. This float that I've applied to it will automatically let this content below it float up and sit next to it, but I have got this sized at 100%. It just makes sense. If I want this to be a half a column, half and half, I would need that width to be 50% or less. Let me go ahead and save that, and we'll see what happens here. I have now got the float property applied through a class to this image. Let's see what happens here. Reset. Check it out. Automatically, right out of the gate, my image now becomes 50%. Let me go ahead and pull up my code here. The image is 50% of my page because I've given it a 50% attribute. This column code, class, again, the class just refers to this dot up top here, okay? Anytime you call class, it means you've defined a custom uh, piece of, of code up here, top here, a, a custom class inside your style tag or your external style sheet. I've given that a property of float left, and now it's floated to the left and allowed the content below that to sit next to it. That's the basis of page layout. You can float any piece of content to the left uh, and then put other con the content that's below it will sit up next to it. That's the essence of page layout and design, and this is how I'd like you to lay out your pages for now for starters. Um, you can do just a simple float to get these going, and we'll implement more complicated page layout later.